Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Financial Grio, aka TFG. My name is Atlanta Elson. I'm one of the co hosts. And you also may be familiar with my other co host, which is Lawrence Delva Gonzalez, aka the Neighborhood Finance Guy, and also Miss Lovely Mordellis. Our first featured guest we have on the podcast is with the Karim crew so Karim podcast crew is on today um with both of the co-hosts it's luther um and uh mock 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 jean <laughs> gotta get my english patient Cree, all right mock jean <laughs> but um i wanted you guys to hear um so many just great topics and discussions and the introspection of the um of the episode we really get to the grill right we talk about food we talk about the the mixture of the seasoning marinated the plantains the complex okay i'm making myself hungry <laughs> but yeah we we really get into the the deepness the depthness of it all and i just can't wait for you guys to hear it so i'm not gonna hold you guys back enjoy you know we might have you um do a little commercial for us, Lawrence. That'd be great. <laughs> you guys got the people with the smooth voices like Atlanta or Lovely. Lovely in the corner. Well, you being real quiet. You're absorbing all of this. Are you having Lawrence, did you just give me a Haitian? compliment? Are, are was, you just... Is that recorded? You, yeah, it is recorded. And second, Lovely, are you are you feeling flashbacks or something about people bullying no. you as a kid? <laughs> no, no. No, I actually didn't get like whoopings like that. I've only gotten two. And one was because my sister lied. And the other one, my mom was being mad at random. I don't You're believe in Yeah, I don't believe in corporate um, punishment and beating kids. But that's another thing. So um, I've been listening. And I actually- I'm, be- I- I'm beating kids, man. I'm beating kids straight up. Oh. <laughs> like let's let's keep it real. <laughs> let's keep it real. No, I won't I won't be beating them. I won't be beating them. But um I asked like the first three questions of the podcast. Lawrence always calling me out. Like I was I'm out here engaged, just like wow, this is really good. This is going good. I'm loving the transitions. But no, um, I think everything that we talked about, I think what was really important when you guys were mentioning at the FinCon um, was being open to opportunities, being open to go to some place where you're going to be fed opportunities. And I want to ask this question to um, you guys is, do you believe that in our community right now that we have a a scarcity of opportunities or we have a lack of focus of what we should be pushing towards? Absolutely a lack of focus. The opportunities are there. We spoke about this on uh, previous podcasts. Um, We had discussions about this off the podcast of of the lack of focus. Um, There's a lot of noise out there, a lot of distractions. Um, And opportunities are there. Traditionally, what we are seeing, what we call it the great resonation, right? Uh, Most people are quitting because we we no longer have the traditional nine to five. You can create a model, create a business and execute it because we have the power of social media, the power of the internet and accessibility uh, to get the reach of people. Um, and, and that's successful in itself because you build so much of skills to do so. Um, like you, uh, Lovely, you work with small business owners to help them scale, making from $10,000 a month up to you know 100000 plus or get brand deals, however, to monetize yourself. So it's, it's not that the opportunities are not there. It's just that we lack focus. And a lot of that is um, coming into um, being young and not having the guidance. And within that, if we're not noticing and identifying those issues as we grow older, arrested development stands still. (laughs) There's no growth at all. And we're seeing that the impact is having on the generation, impact is having on adults, uh, millennials specifically, is um, we're doing a lot of busy work of really not doing anything at all. (laughs) Just to say we're busy. And um, we're we're seeing the impact is having five years, 10 years of um, no growth at all. Like when you're taking stock of your life, like what have I done? Who have I served? Who have I helped? You can't say much at all. So I I really think it's just lack of uh, focus. Definitely. I would have to agree with you, uh, Alenta. Um, I also wanted to add it's one lack of focus and there's also a lack of self-awareness. Um, that's one thing I noticed in our community. And this is one of the reasons why it is one of our pillars, um, on Cohen podcast 
you know, personal development, it, it, it's huge. Um, I do believe that, you know, in order for you to, 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 to run a successful business, you need to know who you are. You need to have, you know, you have to have, have confidence. Um, and, you know, that's something I, even, you know, building wealth, right? You know, uh, we talk about, we talk about, you know, paying off debt and, and, and personal finance and things like that. A lot of time, it's, it's most of the time, it's the mindset, right? It's not, it's not like they don't know what to do. It's just the mindset. It's just not there. And I think that if we can improve a little bit better in terms of our personal development as a community, <clears throat> once again, the opportunities are there. It's just for us to just have the confidence, to be confident enough to go grab those opportunities. Um, if you're not dynamic, you're anthropic. So if you're not growing, you definitely come into an end. You're going towards your end. I I believe it's a lack of focus. I agree with you um, that we need to continuously improve ourselves, our businesses, our families, and 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 ultimately our community. So I I do agree with that. And the other thing I'll add is um, Tyler Perry. I think he said that he was at one point he got tired of knocking on people's doors and asking if he can sit at their table he said he's just gonna build his own table and then invite his own crew so yeah i think sometimes we could be unaware of things that are there but if we're focused enough if we're determined enough if we're driven enough i think we can even create our own opportunity um and, and build our own table where we're full of haitians are sitting there um so Yeah, something in regards to what Mark just dropped, the idea of our communities are changing, especially in this day and age. We have a lot of, uh, we're obviously we're all millennials, you know, at some point I'm the geriatric millennial, you know, a little older than the rest. You, you see the little graze, graze in the bob. It is Straight what it is. Y'all gonna get them too. Y'all gonna get them too, it's all right, it's all right. But ultimately there's a lot of uh, Haitian parents that are either retired, well, they either retired this year or last year, or they're gonna be retiring the next uh, five and 10 years. So that's gonna create a, um, an interesting dynamic in the community because a lot of people are retiring broke and without a real good plan or strategy or their strategy was to retire to Haiti. And as Haiti is now, they're seeing that maybe Haiti is not the place that they're gonna to retire to. And I don't know, anybody got thoughts about that? Like what's gonna happen for, for Haitians for the next five to 10 years? What's going on in the Haitian American community? So I'm doing a plug right quick because I wrote a story maybe a year or two ago before I bought the house. I'm not sure, but it's actually featured on, I was a feature blog uh, writer on the Neighborhood Finance Guy uh, on Lawrence website. And the title of this uh, blog article, what well, blog uh, writing was, my mom can't afford to retire. And I had to kind of script out and write about that experience, talking to my mom as not only individually, but collectively with my siblings and to see what does retirement look like to her and for her to understand that if she do want to retire, what is the plan, right? And um, the conclusion of that, my mom didn't even know that once she finally retired or she kind of, um, place out there that she's retired she still thinks she could get some form of income of um like a paycheck and and that will sustain her <laughs> right and we had to get her to understand that social security won't be enough and we asked her do she still want to live in um Florida she said no that's we actually do she wants to live in Haiti she says uh no she she, she wants she doesn't want to live in Haiti uh, she may want to look into Brazil, all these, I'll ask her, do you know how much it costs <laughs> to do all these things? And I think it's just this assumption that you can continue to work. My mom is 66, I think, 67 is in continuously working, right? Um, at this point where she has to, um, to sustain herself. Um, can she retire? Yeah, she downsides a bit, but it's that pride and that ego to continue doing something where you kind of have to help them change that mindset that, hey, you can still retire and be comfortable, but you have to have a plan to do so. And that, and, and for us as siblings, we had to have that tough conversation within ourselves too, collectively to say that, hey, mom is getting older. 
um, she'll be 70 right around the corner. What does that look like? What does 75, what does 80 years old look like? Someone has to pay for that. <laughs> the roof, everything, the house that she has, we have to sustain that or sell it, or we have to have something in writing, right? In an uneventful, you know, timing of her death, what may happen. These are really tough conversations. And what I realized coming from that, um, discussing with my siblings and my mom is that, um, she had to something I, I kind of know that she had to look and identify that her own mortality is not as extensive as she may think it is right she just think that she's going to work and work and work not realize the end is the end or not realizing that you know being prepared financially for something like that if it comes to medical issue if it comes to you're not able to work how does that look like so um, yeah, check out that, uh, a little plug-in, <laughs> check out that writing post on the Neighborhood Finance Guide, <clears throat> and it's also on my LinkedIn, but it's You feel tough. like a real author of kind of book, try to plug their own stuff, <laughs> kind of buy, buy, buy my book, buy my book, real plug. Real good plug, like, but Robert, no, there's Robert tough Kiyosaki. conversations, man. <laughs> Tough conversations you gotta have with your parents. I'm surprised she hey. didn't beat you after you brought that stuff to her. She just straight up beat oh, you. Oh, I fed her first, I fed <laughs> her. <laughs> We I'm fair. Sure. I know what I was doing. Oh, wow. I gotta soften the blow. <laughs> gotta soften the blow. Fed her. I took no. I uh, got her pedicure. Got her nails done. Then we went out to wow. eat. And then my my brothers and sisters they all met up at my apartment. So she didn't even know. Surrounded but, her. Got wow. rid of all the belts. <laughs> the kids <laughs> came. It sounded so like she, an intervention. Okay. Right. Right. We did what we got to do. You got to do what you got to do. You know, like you just have to sometimes, but we do. It's, it softened the blow. She was fed. I think she took a nap before, so she was good. You're lucky. My mom just like hit me up. was like, I retired. Like still to this day, I have no idea what she retired <laughs> oh, to. She... I thought we had a plan. I thought it was a plan. <laughs> at one point she felt a certain way about oh, somebody man. told her something at work and she quit. <laughs> so you, you know, the funny thing is, I feel like whew, this is... This is a couple of things to unpack here. I feel like we have to start, we have to stop looking at our parents as just parents and start looking at our parents as our friends that we would advise the good things to do, right? The things, hey, don't do this or start doing this now. Um, because it's funny, like all of us are saying that and we can we can imagine Atlanta saying that to her mom and we're like, oh, she didn't do this and she didn't do that. Like, I feel like... Um, to, to answer the question, can can Haitian parents retire? Yes. Can they retire in Haiti? Absolutely. I do believe that Haiti is still a virgin country for the most part. It's centralized, but it, there I've been to the four corners of Haiti at this point, and I will tell you that it's beautiful. It's still untouched um, for the most part. And so, yes, we, we don't have to go back to where they're from, right? They can go back and and stay in another area that they're, that, you know, just to, to venture out. Um, but going back to my point about how we treat our parents has to change. Yes, with honor and respect, all that. But at the same time, like, for example, um, my wife and I, we started telling her mom now, she has plans to retire in Haiti in the next five years. I said, okay, next five years, what are you doing now? Right? Um, so she, we said, if, where are you going to stay? Oh, I don't want to go back to Port-au-Prince. Okay. If you don't want to go back to Port-au-Prince, you want to go back to Gilles, I mean, where you're from. That's great. Start building. So she started building. So midway through building, we're like, oh, she called me. She, she's like, oh, Mac, you know what I told her? I said, one of the things that you can start doing now is that house is going to be beautiful. It's going to be fully, um, central AC, um, with with invert there and all of that for for um electricity so guess what airbnb it and she's like oh okay my my face are we but on layer could him that with him the front office when i'm calling your office la and then kuna so lot boa i'm going for airbnb i'm like that's perfect now you're talking now even if you push your retirement seven to ten years just because you want to but you have another source of income that is already coming in where you don't have to like say haiti get bad and it's like 20 years before it gets better you got 20 years of extra income coming in. And, you know, the scary thing is she was telling me that she has a sister in Haiti that actually renting her place, who's a magistrate, renting her place, set me whatever amount for the whole house to turn it into a law firm. Like there are things that they're just they can start thinking about is what I'm trying to get to that can definitely put them in that path. And I feel like 
because we're still looking at them like, oh, mom, you know, like, I'm scared. Don't beat me. Like, like Lauren said, we got Bob Blush now, you know, <laughs> come at us different. <laughs> I will, I will I mean, put it in context. Come at us with respect. Of it, though. <laughs> Yeah, ab- Haitians are stubborn. You got it took us Very years stubborn. to have that conversation with my mom. Absolutely. And I'm not saying it's gonna be a easy. long time, but you have to kind of like build up to it and get them to be receptive of the information, receiving that information, and to ask questions like your mother in law was asking questions about, but it is tough for them. And then yeah. I, they, they they don't identify that, you know, you have to have a plan. And it's funny enough, because they plan everything else for everyone else, but when it comes to themselves. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, we're, we're going to get there when we get there. When we get there, we'll eh, figure it out. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah they, they just have to be receptive of it. So if you are in that position, just please, you know, kind of slowly get up to that. Depends on your parent. Um, and also just uh, feed them some food like I did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, can I say one more thing? Um, mm-hmm. I agree with you a thousand percent. Atlanta, they have to be receptive. Obviously, nobody can. You can't force anyone to to do anything obviously um i was listening to a podcast uh yesterday that talked about um and I, I forgot the name i would i wish i could plug them but they're on npr um so they they actually talked about um getting people to actually take steps sometimes it's not just pushing information but also aligning the things that they can do in their path right so you want you want somebody to they were talking about vaccines and they were talking about um, pushing their different narratives and they they were saying okay so you want people to to talk about to take a vaccine they were giving that example it's not just about hey here's why vaccine is good for you and you read it to them every single day but it's hey here's the closest place where you can go and these are the times available and so I think with our parents or even with people that we care about loved ones hey Airbnb is a, an opportunity. You already have a house there that's not doing anything. You like you start putting things in their paths. I agree with you. It's going to be hard. But you start putting things in their path. Have you considered X, Y, and Z? And I know somebody who's doing it. And I know somebody who, who worked on it. And that's because what we were able to do is related to her own sister that is already renting her place. Like, that's crazy. Like, her own sister is already doing it. And then she, was, she didn't even have the idea. So I, I agree with you. It's hard. But if, if we care about them, we're going to do what Atlanta did and, and, and push them to that decision one way or another. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Mike and Atlanta. It's, it's a very tough conversation, um, which I had to have with, with, with my dad specifically. And um, and I find out just like, you know, many Haitian parents, he doesn't have a plan for retirement. And, um, you know, it's it's very tough. And like Mike was saying, you know, I was giving them ideas of different things they could do, whether it's like, you know, Ubering right now or, you know, create a, a, um, a, a, car, a car wash business, something that can eventually sustain and stuff with that skin. That's going to be uh, uh, physically demanding um, where, you know, he could, you know, sustain himself. And I came to the realization that, you know, I might be his retirement plan. Right. It's it's a it's a very it's 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 when I'm it's looking at it for you, man. It's yeah, it's painful, painful man. It's like I'm looking at it. I'm like, dude, you know, I'm trying to build a future. I'm thinking I can, about this. I can, da, da, da. I can hear that in your voice. Good job. I felt that reality, yeah. reality, reality is it's not only me. I feel like it's a majority of us who's going to have to take care of them. It's it's my it might be a little too late. It's it's a it's a tough reality, honestly. It's it's a it's very you know when thinking about it, it's we might be a little bit too late to you know have them retire where they you know they're comfortable like without needing our help in a sense you know financially, and you know I had to realize that I'm like man like I just felt the weight on my shoulders like as a first generation. You know now I'm learning about personal finance. Thank God I you know I'm learning about personal finance. Imagine. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to see, you know, trying to come to agreement with that in my head is like, oh my God, like in about 10 years, five, 10 years, I'll have to take care of them. We just recently, I'll say maybe less than six years ago, excuse me, maybe less than six years ago, my mom just got her life, uh, insurance (laughs) and, she did not know 
well, she, of course she knew um, the unexpected death of my father, right? But she, she understand the financial expenses when it comes to life insurance, when, when it comes to funeral costs and whatnot. But um, I had to kind of let her know of where we stand in, in, in the evil, you know, unexpected time if she does pass unexpectedly, right? How does that look like? And sit down with an attorney, uh, have a will written out um, if she can't, you know, disclose how she wants to pass away or however, have that in writing. And I think with that, like Mac uh, mentioned, like placing those like ideas and everything in their mind to understand that, hey, you're getting older, that's okay. But as your children, we want to make sure you're taken care of, right? And she has to, once again, identify mortality to say that she will not live forever. And for her, it has is I guess it, it has its benefits because she knows that she don't want to be an expense once she's gone. And I'm just so happy that we got at least that, the will <laughs> and the um the life insurance, because if if she does pass away um unexpectedly, then that's covered, right? But most Haitian parents or parents in general don't have that, you know? And these again, this took years <laughs> to have a conversation with my mom and um we have to kind of identify that it's it's not that it's, it's it's really a hard conversation but it's to say that we want to really take care of our families and that's in life and in death right so um yeah man it's it's, it's something that i think that could, that could be another episode <laughs> we could discuss but i you guys mm-hmm. hit on some Definitely. great points but I, I, I hear that, Luther. I want to touch on the the stuff. mental health aspect because I think we're not we're not understanding there's an element of them having to go through that process that Atlanta is talking about. It's acceptance of death, acceptance that there is a transition. And we're not even diving diving into that. There's a lot of Haitian families that are not typical. They are what do we call blended families, right? And so you might have um, a Haitian father that has maybe, let's say he has four kids that's not within the nuclear family. And he has, let's say he does have the life insurance. Like, well, who, who's responsible? Who's the person that's going to make the, who's the point person? Who's going to make the decision? So there's a lot of complexity in family planning when families are not, because we're, we're making, we're having this conversation in like a structure. There's a mom and a dad and there's these children. Like for me, for example, I'm the first of my mom and my dad, but my mom and my dad are not married. My dad lives in Haiti. He has four or five kids. I know that if my dad passes away to today, as much as I don't have the closest relationship with, with my father, I am the American kid that's here, which means you're cutting the check. <laughs> you are going to cut the check. If he has to go to the hospital, he has something. And no matter how much, like my dad is a person has very much a lot of pride. And even yesterday I was like asking him some like key questions, like your address or this, that, and a third. And there was like this hesitation of just like, well, why do you need all this stuff going on? And it's, it's one of those things where I know at the end of the day, I'm responsible. So there's so much different dynamics. And I think for me, what allowed me to understand a level of, who I am in my family. You have to understand what piece you play in your family. And that's really important because I'm the oldest, but I'm the oldest for my mom and my dad in a very different dynamic. And not all, my mom had a stroke when I was 18. My mom had a successful business going on. And at 18 years old, we had, my mom had a home. We had two cars. I've always had to get whatever I wanted. And at 18, that was it. She had a stroke. We lost everything. I ha- I remember writing the last final checks to her employees, um, her contractors. I remember having to call. Um, I don't know if you guys if you guys in Florida, but there's this big complex. Um, she had a contract with um, this this complex, and she had a um, cleaning business. And I had to call and say, hey, um, the contract has to be you know closed. Now here's the thing that I learned about that in that moment at 18. There could have been a whole different path if I understood business. If I understood that in that moment, I didn't have to close the business, right? I could have become the owner and operator for her. I could have kept that cash flow going. I could, so, so see, we're talking about preparation. We're talking about legacy. But for my mom, it still was much of a business of survival and not a business of legacy. Mm. And so because of that, 
I didn't have, I wasn't, I, I was doing this stuff because I used to go to do this stuff with her. Like I knew the people, I used to help her clean. I used to do these things, but it didn't click with me. So by the time I'm 23, 24, having a revelation of what could have been at 18, I was like, oh, never again. Not my kid, not myself. I don't care how long it takes me. It could take me 15 or 20 years. Like legacies is not only about the final, but it's all, it's about the middle because if we don't think about the middle, like there might not be death, but that might be a health crisis where they're no longer working. So you, what you think you might have five or 10 years for tomorrow could become your problem. Tomorrow you can get a call that changes the trajectory of everything that you've been planning. But that's the thing about collectively understanding the piece that you play. And it's, it's kind of like dark where you have to think about those things. But because I had experience it at 18, what, now that I'm 30, I'm like, when I'm speaking to other people, I'm like, you think life is in your control when one moment can change your true um, financial situation. And that's why you can't keep living on the edge because one thing can literally transition. You, you're, you're getting married. You're married even. Some of you guys um, said you're married. Now it's not only your family, but it's your wives. And if she has um, an issue and her family, she gets a call, hey, mom's sick and mom's been working. And we thought we had five more years of her working and we've been putting away and you don't have that anymore. And so when we're talking about legacy, we're talking about process, we're talking about being responsible. You have to think about it with things that you're not in control of. And so we always think we have more time. Having had the experience where time was not on my side, you wake up, I was one month into college like new transition, trying to figure out, just started a nursing job, pressure of pressure of pressure of pressure and having to step up and realizing the mistakes that I made because I did not have, we didn't have a legacy plan. We didn't have a, a, a bridge as well. If this is happening, these are the three employees I have. These are the four employees I have. This is how much they're owed. This is that and a third. There wasn't a ledger. And when I start to speak about like these small businesses or these enterprises, I'm pushing people to be at scale because at scale, you have leverage. At scale, because you have a ledger, you have an understanding of the business validity, the business um, books. You can even, you, I could have even sold it. So even if I didn't have the uh, capacity to run it, these are the contracts we already have. This is how much cash flow. This is this, is that, and a third. I'll sell it to you to 200 grand. I know that 200 grand, I could do whatever, or 500 grand, or how much if it's worth. These are the things that when, I, when we start to speak about legacy, we start to speak of mindset, we start to keep thinking bigger. That's why I have a problem with scam culture. That's why, because mm -hmm. it's, it's shortcuts. When if you actually play the long game, you're securing the bag for generations over and over and over, but you really have to think, you really have to be put in position. And my thing is you need to understand what piece you play on that board in your life and in the people around you, in your family, because you might be the new patriarch. You might be the new matriarch in formation and you need to know that's who you are so that you don't necessarily play games because you don't have the, we don't have the space to play the games that some other people have when, you know, they own three houses and a summer home and a home in Venice and a home. You have to understand what game you're in. And so it's a lot. And we're not trying to scare you, but we're trying to say like, you guys need to understand that when we're saying planning, when we're saying financial decisions start today, if you wasn't like that yesterday, weren't thinking that like that the day before, but today, and this moment you're listening to, you need to figure out like what what piece am I on in this chess game that's happening in life? Some of you guys have not even shown up to the plate to even know, but it's time for you to make that process and make that change, to make that pivot. TFG. This is on me. She's going through on the rant, on the rant. <laughs> like when lovely Can clocks we? in, she clocks in on the rant. <laughs> Can we take like Love 30 seconds of silence for this? This was amazing. <laughs> like, I mean, this, you're, you made me think of things that I didn't oh, even think about. Man. I feel like, man, I got to talk to my wife a little bit more. I got to talk to my parents about this. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, like, yeah, you're right. A lot of times we plan so far. This is, that was great. I'm not even going to try to even add anything to that. Man. Yeah. You have to follow it sometimes, but it's true. Especially when things are happening that are beyond your control, but because you you failed to plan anyways, it gets even worse. A couple of years back, I, I made a big push and tell my my buddies, my you know, closest people in my my circle, 
like make sure that your parents are good you know start finding out their finances understand how much they owe how much they got coming in understand how much they have saved up or invested because you need to know do they have um the life insurance in place do we have a game plan and ultimately some of them kind of you know you buy back you know they're, they're like yeah whatever you know it'll figure it out i'll take my time some people try to with their family like Alana um, did, and you know, she was, they were met with a lot of friction because the family members didn't understand what's going. Why? Why are you so serious all of a sudden about this money thing? Oh, well, Brisbane Club, you know, it's like oh, Brisbane, I see you in a slum. Like it's like it's all these like paranoid thoughts. But in truth, you're supposed to have a plan. And ultimately, in the last two years, uh, one of my friends' dad had two strokes, like two, you know, strokes himself. He he ran into, you know, he got he had a stroke while driving. So he ended up waking up, you know, you know, he ran into something, you know, good on him. God is good. He's he's with us still. He's still doing his thing. But the doctor told him that he can't drive ever again. So he was forced into retirement. But on top of that, he lost a lot of that mobility. And you're talking about a guy that's been driving ever since he was what you give or take, you know, 17, 16. And he's now, you know, way in his later years and he's unable to do, to move as he used to move, especially older Haitian guys, for some reason, like my, my, my dad-in-law, they, they go to their car on Saturday and they just leave for the day and they come back. <laughs> like, that's just what they do. <laughs> like, what are they doing out there? Nobody, nobody really knows. It's just like, that's, they get in the car. They call it yeah, bye yeah, bye. they go, they, after travail, whatever, you know, or they, they go chill with somebody, some of their friends, they do something, but they come back. That level of mobility, that level of access to them was total freedom. That's the, the little thing that they love. They love to work, but they also love that get in the car and go do something. Bye phone, bye guy. But without it now, it's defining him. And he was forced to, especially this week or the last two weeks, he will start look. he's talking to his son and one of my best friends. And the idea is like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like he's literally confronted with his own self like the person that he never spent a lot of time with the things that he never think about like he he was defined by work and by doing whatever you know doing whatever to get outside the house now that he can't get outside the house there is no work he's forced to deal with himself and a lot of our parents are are going to go through this situation and it has it's beyond money because the money they might not have it that's one thing but on top of that, it's about like their purpose and not having these conversations, these goals, these aspirations early ended up biting people in the ass later on. Another buddy of mine, his, his dad passed away. Um, and I'm like, I, I hope that he talked to them about, you know, the whole life insurance like two or three years ago when I brought it up. I don't bring it up just for the heck of it. I, you know, everything that's happening on these podcasts, on Coin podcasts, we're bringing it up because this is happening now. You need to be very actionable like today. And lo and behold, if you're not, the unplanned can happen. And then now your entire family is in turbulence. And it's exactly what Lovely said, um, said, like without having a true legacy and a plan and sharing that with the family, you're only setting yourself up for, you know, greater errors and greater mistakes and greater heartburn. There's a third category too, right? So there's the, can, can they afford it? There's the mental health aspect. Uh, but one of the things that keep coming to mind is um, what about the ones that takes pride in saying that my kids are going to retire me that's a whole nother category where you got to break that down mentally i don't even know if it still falls under mental health but some of them some of them if you say no it's like <laughs> you're hurting well, they cut you off no you're, they cut you off like you're dead to them now <laughs> what my son is is a computer engineer you telling me he can't retire me or whatever so that's Doesn't that's that aspect money. too making good money yeah when, when are you gonna give me that new car you know all of that um <laughs> and so that's a whole different her. category i'm too. laughing to her at this because that's my story I, I did give my mom two cars though strangely enough like because i can't drive in dc so i just kind of like brought her cars every once in a while i was like hey you could borrow it but she it became so much like her car like it's like well i, I guess you're cool now but but you, you know what i think i think it is great that we are in a position to help and we are creating platforms, we are creating communities, and we are having those types of conversations early. That way, not only now, you know, with their generation, with, with ourselves, right? What are we going to live for our kids? Like, what are we planning for our kids? So I think, you know, I'm very, you know, you know, optimistic about the future and, and what we're doing here as a community, whether it's Lawrence with, with his platform, uh, 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 whether it's uh, uh, Alenta with, with her platform and, and Lovely and with what you guys are doing here, 
with uh, the financial grill, you know, these are the type of conversations we need to have in a community that we didn't have back then. Right. So I, 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 I feel great. I feel good about the future. And I, I know that, you know, more people, you know, is, is going to be impacted by that and more people are going to have those type of conversations. Let's just hope. <laughs> that's, just, <laughs> that's that's all we can do. Let's let's yep. just hope. And we're and being if you're not, examples. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're not willing to learn right now, share the podcast, share the episode with somebody else as you're thinking about it. Right. Um, because it's just, don't hold it to yourself just because you're not ready. If you hear somebody share it to somebody, somebody's parents or something, so so at least these people are listening to these topics and they're seeing how they can um, you know, spread the news and not have the scarcity mindset. Yeah, I think that's the most important part is like when you hear these things, when you get these episodes, not every episode is going to resonate with you 100%. And that's fine. Not everything is uh, in everybody's wheelhouse. So if somebody's talking about real estate and real estate is not, you know, on your heart to do, that's okay. There's another episode where somebody's talking about investing, somebody's talking about crypto, somebody's talking about something that is better than, you know, finding out what happened to Beyonce yesterday or whoever <laughs> that's going on, like whatever is hype, you know, hey, sports person did this. I don't care anymore about that. I want to I want us to care more about what's going on in our own homes within ourselves and how we can grow and how we could change. And part of that conversation, like you said, uh, like Mike just said, if you're not ready for it, sometimes you need to kind of like share it back out, have the conversation with somebody else. So that it could spark something within you. That's the point of these talks. It, it's not to say exactly what you're going to do. It's to kind of branch you out to something else, to kind of force you to pivot into your own journey in order for you to become you know, what you're supposed to be. Um, I don't think we were um, sent on earth to, to record or to, to witness Netflix, <laughs> like, like testify. Like God is like, what did you do? You know, I watched a lot of Netflix. I, I was on Instagram. I got me a BBL and da 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 da. I'm like nobody, nah, it's not that important. It's like I'm, I'm, I actually had a question in my mind. Like if, if we go to to to, to the pearly gates, right? When you're talking to God, he's gonna look at you. He's like he's gonna look at the picture of who he sent. He's gonna look at the picture of the the, the Instagram. He's like. I don't know if it's the same person. <laughs> like, how do you clock in? What happened there? <laughs> yeah, like, can you explain to me? <laughs> like, I sent you with looking uh, like this, but you yeah. end up looking like this. Like, what's the point of that? So I do want people to challenge themselves in how they process the reality that we're in now. And it's not just about brunch. It's not just about going to the club. It's not just about going to the next homecoming at your HBCU, Atlanta. It's about growth. No matter what conversation it is, it always circle back to brunch. Lawrence, let it go, please. Oh, like, Such a brunch to... hater. Let hey, it go. I, I do not hate brunch. I'm just saying. I, I was waiting for it, lovely. I, I, was, I was writing something down. Then I looked I over and he through. said it. I thought I was going to make this episode no, it, through without brunch. And he no mentioned time. brunch. Hey, I'm just oh saying it's God. expensive. It's expensive out here. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> like In, y'all know. Inflation, inflation is, is real. Uh, for real. Uh, what I was going to say, Luther, when was the last time you were in Haiti? I, I think Max said he uh, recently um, went. Last time I went for a tech summit, uh, 2019 um, summer. You're not Haitian enough, man. Boo, boo. <laughs> Crash, man, out here in 2019. I haven't been there in 20, <laughs> to 2011. How, how about that? Why <laughs> did he tell me not Haitian enough? I'm <laughs> like, like, yo, I got to travel the world first, though. I'm like, I'm that kind of person. I got to travel the world. I'll be back later on. That, that's actually a lie, though. I'm, I'm not going to come back. <laughs> Just kidding. Just Unless it's free. Somebody, somebody bring me for free and be like, mm, I'll think about it. I get some good suspa at home right now, so I can't really cheat on my wife like that. I got, I got, I got to eat her suspa. But <laughs> well, I don't. If even you sound can right. go to Haiti. Go to Haiti. I. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, Luther and I, we had an episode about. Um, well, here, we had a couple about people that were like comfortably working, making six figures businesses and investing here, and they just uprooted and they went back home to Haiti. And that whole process, um, is interesting to hear what they talk about. Hey, call him out, man. It's, it's, it's Christopher Genti, man. Call yeah, yeah. Genti. I, yeah. yeah. yeah sh- sh- throw shade at the guy. Like, <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not shade. That's... <laughs> I know, I know. That's... <laughs> call him out by name. C. Genti out here in these streets. Yeah. 
Yeah, so shout out to to Cijon T. But but no, I was it wasn't it was actually quite the opposite. It was me saying that um if, if he said one of the things he said before you go go visit, I I promise you, uh you know I don't want us to fall in the narratives that we're hearing. If you can go visit, even if you have to go and go to the airport um that is in Okap instead, don't go through um through Port-au-Prince and and at least enjoy. Don't go to where you're from. I would strongly recommend it. Uh, I know Lawrence was joking, saying that he, he won't go. Uh, no, but no, that's, that's, that's actually it's an actual truth. No, but he, you know what? You kind of convinced me to go through Cap. Go through Cap. Yeah, that's go the through only Cap. Place I know. I'm telling you. I grew you. up in Haiti, so I don't have like the feel to go back because I want to see the rest of the world. There's so much right. of the world I haven't seen. But I see what you mean. That I, the only place I really want to see is like Cap. I don't think I've ever been to Cap. I've been to the other spots though. So like I grew up in Haiti and and I even though I was born here I went to Haiti really young. So I I have a lot of um I'm like you. I came probably around the same age. I think you said 9. I think I came like around 11. Um but but still the point is um I I feel like for me to travel the world I'm going to get these questions like, oh you're Haitian and this and that and I want to be able to take a little piece of Haiti with me wherever I go. And so that's why I say I say to go to Haiti but there's there's so many um unseen beautiful naturally beautiful places i'm sorry i'm I'm shamelessly plugging haiti but i i do i do think every listener should attempt to buy a ticket uh and at least in their 30s even if you don't do it in your 20s but in your 30s go visit where you can take people with you take your kids and stuff like that and buy some real mangoes. They sell it at Whole Foods. I know it seems expensive Definitely. at Whole Foods, but go get some mangoes, some real ass mangoes on Whole, at Whole Foods. There is 143 different type of mangoes in Haiti. Woo! Yes. Definitely. 143, bro? I definitely did not. Yes, I, um, it was, what was it, Luther? We, um, we did a, uh, so right before we, we, like in our episodes, we do this, um, uh, flex, flex your, flex Haitian your Haitian. Muscles. Yeah, that's what it is. Flex your Haitian muscles, and um, that was yeah, that was research, and we we brought it up. Yeah, 143 different type of Haitian mangoes. Man, we've been going through this conversation for a hot minute. Lovely, you about to say something? Like, cause I'm about to close y'all off. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really good though. Like, everything was like yummy. I I feel like okay, this is legit. This is good. Um, I think. We will probably put this full episode because I feel like it was just so good. So if you got to listen to it in breaks and pieces, then that's just what you have to do because we're not going to break it up. Um, but no I edits, want, no filters. No edits, <laughs> no edits, no part one, part two. But I think this was so good. There was so much that we didn't even get into. So I think we need to have Cohen back. I need I, I need Luther and Mark <laughs> like, to do a, um, a, a real episode number two so that you guys can. We didn't even get into like the current state of Haiti. There's just so much like um that's going on that we didn't get to dive into. But I think this framework of conversation that we had was so solid that you know you know where I'm going with this. It has to be actionable, right? It has to be something that you can implement. So we already gave you a lot of actionable steps, but think about what conversations you need to have with your yourself before you can even have a conversation with your parents, have a conversation with your spouse. You need to have a conversation with yourself and do that audit. And then from there, figure out what is legacy planning for you. Because we're talking about changing the narrative of what Haitian legacy looks like. I love 1804, like just like everyone else. I understand we talked about Bate de Vetsier. We talked about those things, but what is our current victory? Where are the places that we're going to go forward with that our children can look back and say, oh, 2025 or 2020, 30, do you know what these group of Haitians have done? So we want to start a new legacy and continue it. But before you can start a legacy for the collective, you do need to look inward to see where are the places that you're not necessarily looking into. But I'm going to let everybody give their 30 second wrap up. And then from there, we're going to close off this beautiful episode with Coem. Anybody can go. I, I talked enough, <laughs> but thank you guys for um, coming out. Uh, this, again, like Lovely said, it was a solid episode. We touched on a lot of things um, in this conversation went all different discussions and uh, topics. So I, I think it, it was a solid episode. We, we need you again, come back, please. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you guys for the for the opportunity. Um, we truly appreciate it. Um, I think I met Lawrence um, at the Haitian Millionaire Money. So we 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 I I, I co-host uh, uh, an event, a yearly event, and the Haitian Millionaire Money, where we talk about personal finance, paying off debt, investing, and all that good stuff. 
And um, this year was our second year um, event, and we're planning on having a, a, a third one uh, next year. So, um, you know, we need things like that. We need multiple, you know, platforms like that to, you know, have those type of tough conversations. And, um, you know, I like what you guys are doing. I love the name, by the way, the Financial Grill. So, um, so yeah, I, I truly appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank, thank you again for, for the invite. Definitely. Um, man, this, this episode was so beautiful. Um, thank you guys for inviting us. Um, I feel like, I feel like we have to do the same thing, Luther, and, and start inviting these, these guests again to our podcast and, and lovely, definitely have you there as we well. We lovely. Yeah, we have yeah, Lawrence. We, need lovely. we had Lawrence, we had Atlanta. <laughs> Damn, it's like Good. scratch it. The rest of y'all, we're going to need lovely. <laughs> we need lovely, you know, um, cause lovely. You gotta it, circuit back. You gotta circle it back. Like everyone. I, I can already tell lovely is the gem dropper amongst you guys. <laughs> I'll bring um, all so, three. How about that? <laughs> we'll bring all three. We can bring all three. No, nah, I'm just playing because because I see Lawrence like to, to throw shade at Lovely. So I got your back, Lovely. Um, but no, it was amazing. It was amazing, you guys. Um, the conversation felt natural. It was just like five people just discussing their passions. Um, and so really appreciate it. And we we don't mind coming back at all. I can say that right now. Um, thank you guys. Ooh, hey, were we your, your first uh interviews? It's the first time you guys interviewed and somebody else's stuff. Definitely, um, first time together. That's cool, him. Yeah, first time. Okay, together, okay, okay. I, Luther, I, you've been interviewed by somebody out here, like. Yeah, I've, uh, last year I've had a couple. Yeah, I had a couple of other. Okay, all right, cool. cool. Same. I, I've been I'm interviewed here. individually. Yeah, I've been interviewed individually as well. <laughs> like, but, uh, like, uh, that's, that's like, what he said. I'm curious, out here. I, I did something like, too. Correction, <laughs> correction, correct that, Lawrence. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, I kind of want to say, I'm going to leave it with this. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mecca, a.k.a. Glimo, a.k.a. the Lyrical Lugawu, uh, so, something from Kidnapping. He, he had a whole string of statements that he used to say, but one of the uh, poems that he coined uh, this phrase, like, land of the free, uh, home of the brave, sounds like Haiti to me. The idea that, you know, we are all Haitians, but we carry that piece of Haiti, no matter what we, uh, where we are on the planet and what we do. So for me, you know, for anybody that's out here, you know, find out about more about yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to tell who you who you are. Find out about your history because it's going to be on the November 18th um, uh, episode. So definitely look into your own history because nobody's going to tell you who you are and nobody's going to provide you with the tools to ensure of a better destiny or legacy that you're going to leave for your family. So it's up to us to move beyond 1804 into 2021, 2025, 2030 and 2050. We need to start shifting our mindsets and hopefully with this conversation, you start seeing that there's a lot of other people in these streets that's trying to do the best that they can to share information and opportunity. So thank you for listening. Do share this thing. Do like it. You know, do talk to your friends about it because we're, we're on the path of becoming millionaires. So that's what we're doing. Lovely. You said you're going to wrap us. That's it. Thank you for listening to the Financial Grio. Mes amis, fais respect, fais respect. <laughs> clap, 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 clap it up, clap it up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, whoa, wait, wait. Where can we find oh, Chloe's yeah. podcast? Yes, yes. Uh, like, look at Atlanta no edits, with no save. edits. We're the same, we're the same. We're, <laughs> wow, you guys back. just going to push yourself like, out like run this. Run it back. We, can't, we, can't, we cannot do run that. Run it back. We're we not, we're not that good. You're our first no. guest. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't do that today. So, where Chloe can we find podcast, you guys? We're available everywhere. Um, Chloe podcast. Uh, K O R E M podcast uh, on IG, Facebook, YouTube, um, on the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, you know, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And also follow Haitian Millennial Money. Yeah, we'll plug in all these things into the show page notes. <laughs> Lawrence, well, that's what, what's really what I'm really saying. Just plug them all in. And I think it's going to be really, really good. I think you guys definitely, I'm really interested hearing more about the Haitian Millennial Money. I didn't know about it. So I'm like the conference. I, I did when I was looking into you guys, I saw that. I was like, oh, that's pretty dope. Um, so can't wait to see that. Big ups to you guys. We should get an invite. <laughs> Definitely. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Mocking the corner, like maybe you already have a list of people. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> like, like, she's, maybe 2020. <laughs> she's securing her spot. That's what she's doing. She's securing her spot for next year. Yeah, people can't see my face, but he was like, mm, mm, I can't, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> I was actually laughing because that's that part is all Luther. I got to give him a shout out for that. Him and um, he, you know, Luther don't like me that much. He liked me halfway, so he only got me for Kogim. 
with um Haitian millennial money. He has he has oh, another... it's gonna be one of those scenarios. Years <laughs> later, we're gonna be like he oppressed Luke, me. Man. I think he what I hear Mark saying is like, are you gonna take as long as you took for him to be the no, no, no. <laughs> That's no, that, 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 that actually that person is uh that person is actually good actually uh, she, she's a yeah, good so, person yeah so i i we co-founded uh that platform with merlin she she's actually pretty dope uh, i think you guys should look into her um you know she's you know doing well in airbnb and she's really into you know personal finance building wealth and um she's kind of the engine for that platform so I, i'm just there you know hop on do a quick live and you know, and have this different discussions, but she's she's the engine for that platform here. For the Haitian millennial money? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Got it. Got it. Well, for real, for real, guys, thank you for listening to the Financial Grio podcast. And this is a wrap for real. Bye. See you guys later. All right. Well, guys, there you have it. Thanks again for tuning in to the Financial Grio. I really hope you guys got a full taste of the grill and the discussions and the topics that were discussed but make sure you guys subscribe and like and review um the episode let let, let us know what you guys think leave us those five stars we really uh, appreciate it and just from the bottom of all our hearts thank you guys so much for tuning in until next time tfg we're out <laughs>